Good day, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh, and we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy at equilibrium today. All right, so let me write that up there. I am cursed with squeaky markers, is what I have a feeling about. Let me see if I can get a better, better marker here. Ooh, better blue. There you go. Okay, so in terms of looking at this, we know that Gibbs free energy, when we dissect this comment, right, this title, Gibbs free energy we know is delta G. Delta G gives us the ultimate decision on whether a system, if we're only analyzing the components of the system, whether a system itself is spontaneous, right? So we know that it is spontaneous. And when we say system, really what we're talking about is we're talking about the reaction in the beaker. It is, a system is spontaneous or a reaction is spontaneous if delta G is less than zero. So that means it's a negative, right? And we know that a system or a reaction is non-spontaneous when delta G is greater than zero or a plus, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is really what we're talking about, right? What does spontaneity mean? It means given no outside influence, that reaction is going to happen. It may not happen immediately. It may not happen, you know, right when we want it to, but it's going to happen given enough time. When we talk about a spontaneous reaction, we we relate that to work, and we talk about work in terms of saying, if a reaction is spontaneous, then that is the minimum, or actually the, sorry, that's the maximum, whoo, my A's looking weird, maximum amount of work the system can do. And when, that, when we're talking about the maximum amount of work a system can do, where we're applying this is in electrochemistry. So we're really talking about batteries and we're talking about how much, um, how many hours, how long of a time, how much work can that battery do on something else to run it, right? The non-spontaneous moment here is that this is the minimum amount of work, of work that needs to be done on that system to make it happen. And we know that if we have a reaction that's spontaneous in one direction, let's say it's spontaneous in the forward direction, it is non-spontaneous in the opposite direction. But what happens if a system is at equilibrium, right? So what if delta G is at equilibrium? Well, what is the definition of equilibrium, right? The definition of equilibrium is that the rate of the forward reaction is exactly the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. And if these two numbers are the same, and this is how we define, how we calculate KQ, then that's equal to one when they're the same, okay? We know that we can calculate delta G, at least at standard conditions, by plugging it into this equation. And what happens if K is one, right? If this becomes one, then we know the natural log of one is actually equal to zero which makes sense as to why delta G is zero. If you want to do it at non-standard conditions, we now know delta G naught is factors into the delta G that's at non-standard conditions, right? So we have uh, delta G here, and then we have um, plus RT natural log of Q, right? But we know at equilibrium, 
K is equal to the reaction quotient. That's actually another way to think about equilibrium. The reaction quotient, which is the measure that's just like K at any time during the reaction. Often we, often we deal with it in the initial pieces. At equilibrium, K is equal to Q. So this would also be the natural log of one, which is zero. So we have zero plus zero, which is still zero. If you want to think about it conceptually, Right? If the rate of the forward reaction, where perhaps that reaction is spontaneous, is exactly equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, which is non-spontaneous, then you have pretty much no energy input being given off or taken in, because those two equal out. Okay? And that can also give you a sense of as to why G is zero. It then becomes the critical point, the point at which things change for that system, right? So we can calculate, you know, at what temperature, oh, that's awful. And I have a squeaky marker again. I tell you, I'm cursed with squeaky blue ma markers. At what temperature does a reaction with delta H equal to negative, let's say, 263 kilojoules, and delta S equal to um, negative 506 joules per K, uh, ooh, sorry, at what temperature I'm trying to make that better. At what temperature does a reaction with these numbers become non-spontaneous? Right. We can guess right now that because H is such a ridiculously larger number, because it's in kilojoules, and S is in joules, that this reaction is spontaneous. But when does it become non-spontaneous? And that's where we factor in this idea of delta G equal to zero, right? If I call delta G equal to zero, then what is that equal to? Well, we can use this equation, right? Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, that's gibbs Helmholtz equation, right? I call delta G zero, and then I plug in the other numbers, or maybe I solve for T before then. Let's solve for T before that, right? I know that that's true. If I solve for T here, then I could say delta H is equal to T delta S. So therefore, T is equal to delta H divided by delta S, right? At this particular moment, that's what I'm looking at. And I can actually plug in, my, plug in my numbers at this point. Let's erase this. And if I plug in my numbers at this point, what you have to remember here is that you have to make the units, the energy units match because they have to cancel out. So for instance, right now, S is in joules, H is in kilojoules. You need them to have the exact same units in order to cancel out. So in this case, I'm going to do negative 263 kilojoules. And I'm going to divide that. I'm going to change this into kilojoules as well, which would be negative 0 0.50. Oops, I said 4. I mean 6. I lied. 6 kilojoules per K. And if you actually calculate that out, you will get a number in K, okay? And that is, I would give you that number, but I don't have my phone on me and I forgot my calculator. So we're gonna have to have a mystery moment on that one. All right, until next. Okay, I have my calculator on me now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna plug in negative 263 divided by negative 0.506, and I get a number like, let's see, I had this in orange, 520 K. Pretty high. Above this temperature, this reaction that was spontaneous below it is suddenly non-spontaneous.
And with that, I shall bid you adieu. Until next time.